So one day, two men, Mick and Patty, were having a conversation. Mick says, I've got a medical problem, Patty. You see, I've got to get circumcised. Patty said, wow, at 35 years old? I was a newborn baby when I got circumcised. Mick said, oh, did it hurt? Patty replied, well, I couldn't walk for about 12 months or so. <laughs> One day, a puzzled doctor tells his patient, why are you shaking and gyrating in the clinic after collecting your bottle of medication? The patient points to the label on the bottle and says, look, it says here, shake well before use. The doctor replies, that refers to the bottle. What's cooking, everybody? It's Dr. Ryan here with another hard-hitting algorithm in internal medicine. Thank you for joining me. This is our 46th in series and our sixth and final uh, algorithmic approach in the discipline of endocrinology. We're going to be speaking to hypothyroidism today. A big thank you for watching and liking and sharing this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. So hypothyroidism is a clinical condition that results from thyroid hormone deficiency. Hypothyroidism is more common in women than in men. Symptoms of hypothyroidism include weight gain, fatigue, poor concentration, depression, constipation, cold intolerance, dry skin, proximal muscle weakness, hair thinning or loss, and menorrhagia. Physical findings of hypothyroidism include hypothermia, bradycardia, diastolic hypertension, cognitive impairment, coarse faces, lateral eyebrow thinning, nice one, goiter, dry or coarse skin, hoarse voice, delayed relaxation phase of the deep tendon reflexes or so-called hung reflexes, non-pitting peripheral edema, which speaks to mixed edema, and macroglossia. Now, mixed edema coma is a severe and life-threatening complication of hypothyroidism, usually associated with a precipitating factor such as infection. Whenever hypothyroidism is suspected clinically, it is confirmed with a low serum free T4. Right? Serum thyroid-stimulating hormone or TSH levels determine largely whether hypothyroidism is TSH independent, which speaks to primary disease, or TSH dependent, which speaks to central disease. Now, the causes of primary hypothyroidism can be further separated into the following subcategories: thyroiditis, iodine-related, iatrogenic, and infiltrative. Now, the most common cause of primary hypothyroidism are harsh thyroiditis in the industrialized world and iodine deficiency in the developing world. Central hypothyroidism is rare and caused by pituitary and or hypothalamic dysfunction and synthetic thyroxine is the treatment of choice for primary hypothyroidism. Most adults require a daily dose of around about 1.6 microgram per kg body mass. So let's speak to this now. So we said you do your uh, FeeC4 and you separate this into either TSH independent or TSH dependent disease. And if it's TSH independent, we speak to primary disease, in which case the problem is with the thyroid gland itself, not with the pituitary. And this can be further certified into thyroiditis, of which there's seven uh, etiologies, Hashimoto's, we know, and remember Hashimoto's, we have a thyrotoxic phase, then we have the hypothyroid phase, and then it levels out to baseline, right? So this can cause it postpartum thyroiditis, subacute, which is decoy veins, which is usually the one that is painful. Drug-induced, a classic example is amiodrone. Remember, amiodrone causes the wolf chikoff effect, which is also in hypothyroidism. It can also cause the jod based off phenomenon where we get a hyperthyroidism, so watch out for that. Radiation-induced, it can be painless thyroiditis or infection-related, right? Iodine-related causes both iodine deficiency and iodine excess can cause hypothyroidism. Itrogenic issues like thyroidectomy, ablation, medication, radiation, infiltrative disease, the likes of our infamous hemochromatosis, amyloidosis, sarcoidosis, and renal thyroiditis. Speaking to now TSH dependent disease, speaks to it, the problem being either with the pituitary or the hypothalamus. Okay, so this is a nice illustration here, looking at the clinical features of hypo versus hyperthyroidism. So you see this place, this guy is feeling really cold, right? So intolerance to cold, receding hairline, like loss of outer third of the eyebrows facial and eyelid edema, a dull, blank expression, sometimes according to toad-like faces, which is not a very nice thing to say, I think. Extreme fatigue is what the patient experiences, thick tongues who have slow speech, anorexia, brittle nails and hair, menstrual irregularities, hair loss, um, so this is a female I'm thinking when they're speaking to menstrual disturbances, hair loss, apathy, lethargy, dry skin, which is often coarse and scaly, muscle aches and weakness, remember the proximal myopathy, constipation. Late clinical manifestations include a subnormal temperature, bradycardia, weight gain, diminished level of consciousness, thickened skin, and cardiac sequelae. Watch out for each fibrillation here, okay? And of course, we said this diastolic hypertension. Speaking to hyperthyroidism, we have the opposite. So this person is feeling very hot, hence the fan and the sweating. So intolerance to heat, fine straight hair, bulging eyes, facial flushing there, and then last thyroid, okay, speaking to the 
goiter. Then tachycardia, and you have raised systolic blood pressure, right? Breast enlargement, so gynecomastia indeed. Weight loss, muscle wasting, finger clubbing, tremors, diarrhea, speaking to the hyper defecation, menstrual uh, changes. This is amenorrhea. So the situation is menorrhagia and hypothyroidism. The situation in hypothyroidism is amenorrhea, localized edema. So a lovely OSCE question here. Taken from the Mayo Clinic, thank you guys so much. A 65-year-old woman presents with fatigue and a sore throat. She has history of diabetes mellitus and hypothyroidism. She is anemic. What is the most likely diagnosis? And the answer here is actually A, guys. Sorry, I didn't highlight it. But it's A, speaking to vitamin B12 deficiency. Now, um, the causes of B12 deficiency are many and include achlorhydria, pernicious anemia, wherein there's lack of intrinsic factor, gastrectomy, island resection, bacterial overgrowth, chronic pancreatitis, and long-term strict vegetarian. I just want to talk to the fact that hypothyroidism keeps company with other autoimmune diseases, right? Sometimes we refer to the autoimmune polyneuclide syndromes, but patients with pernicious anemia often have other immune-related conditions as well, like hypothyroidism and type 1 diabetes and vitiligo. Uh, and just so we know, antibodies to intrinsic factor are highly specific to patients with pernicious anemia. So guys, as always, I have something to encourage and motivate you with. C.S. Lewis said, and I quote, that true humility is not thinking less of yourself, but rather thinking of yourself less. Now, the ultimate example of humility for me is taken from the Bible and is recorded for us in the book of John, chapter 13, verse 1 to 17, where there is an account of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. Let's pick up from verse 12, which says, uh, when he had finished washing their feet, um, he put on his clothes and returned to his place, do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. Right? Uh, and this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. And he says, You called me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. The Bible also says that God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. And if anyone wants to be uh, great in the kingdom, he must first be the servant of everyone. So I pray that we will choose to be humble in all circumstances. And have yourselves a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. We're going to start on our algorithmic approach to conditions and infectious disease. I'll see you then.